Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. <laughs> yes, I finished my chest of drawers. I finished my last episode with a case for my chest of drawers. Now I need to finish it. First, those panels will be the sides of my drawers, but they're not long enough. So I'm going to use the jig I made to make some isolate type joints. And in no time, I have all those joints cut and ready to be glued together. To do so, I use glue that I've thickened a bit. It looks more like paste than glue. I spread this on each puzzle shape's end and clip two panels together. Then I add a bit of glue on the top to fill the small gaps. I do this for all my panels and wait for the glue to dry. When it is, it's time to cut all those panels straight and parallel. Then I resurface the panels. Okay, I now have all this for my side, but it's not enough. Lucky for me, I still have all this. Now I can start beginning by the bottom drawer. In fact, it's the only one that is different from the others. So after cutting the front to the right size, it's time to cut the pins. Next, the dovetails on the two sides. And try it in place. <laughs> Perfect. Here you can see that the bottom drawer has the top and bottom sticking out of the sides, but not on the rest of the drawers. I'm stopping the work on the bottom drawers for now. I'll finish it later. Now I need to start to work on the nine other drawers. All of them are identical. I begin by the front. First thing to do is to cut the first one to the right size. Cut the pins. and put it in place to see how it will look. Next, I need to repeat all of this for the eight remaining drawers fronts. In the end, I have all of them. It's time to take care of the sides. I begin by cutting only one side straight. Since the sides are asymmetrical, I have to make two different setups on the jig. But this way, I'm able to cut both sides at the same time. When all the dovetails are cut, I can cut all the sides to the same length. Change the jig setup and cut the back tails. And eventually all the dovetails of the sides are done. It's now time to take care of the backs.
For the pins, I use another setup than the half-blind dovetails I did earlier. Finally, I can cut all the grooves for the bottoms of the drawers. Yes, I have a lot to cut. Next, I can assemble one drawer and measure the size needed for the bottoms and cut them. I finally have everything to make the 10 drawers. I just need to sand the inside of all of them. And now it's time to glue them. Ah, this is not too difficult. A bit of glue and putting everything in place. In the end, I only need one clamp in the back but I still have to make sure they're square. And wait for the glue to dry. When it is, I can sand the exterior of the drawers. I begin by the biggest one. When the first sanding is done, it's time to check if it fits. Yes, but it's getting stuck at the end. But it was to be expected because the panels and the styles are not at the same height and the sharp corners of the back are catching on this. To fix this, I round up the back corners. And give the drawer its final sanding. Now it's time for the second drawer. To hold it in place, I put a small spacer and the strip that will hold the next drawer on top of the first one. Then I drill two holes and screw the strip in place. When both sides are in place, the bottom drawer stays put and the second has something to slide on. But before working on the next drawer, I laser burn my logo on the side of the first drawer. And while the laser does its job, I work on the second drawer. I need to screw the strips on this one also. But when I'm at the central divider, the drawer is a bit too thick. It doesn't slide in place. I have to remove some wood. The first two cuts are quite easy, but not the last one. It's a bit tricky, so I have to be very careful. But I manage it anyway. And now it's time to finish the cut. Now the drawers fit. But obviously the front is now too high. the drawers are in place now. It's time to finish this. For the last couple of drawers, I put the case on the ground and work from the top. But I have the exact same problem for the last drawer. Now the 10 drawers are in place. Okay, uh, one is getting laser burned. 
but some fronts don't have the same spacing as the others. I fix this. Now that I'm satisfied, I make sure each roar is at the same height. They're only missing their final sending. But since each drawer is unique, I don't want to mix them up, so I burn each position on their bottom. It doesn't take very long, <laughs> but it's not as fast as this. And finally, all the drawers are done. The first thing I do is remove all of them, so I can make the final sending on the case. Now I'm ready for the top. First thing to do is to cut it to size. This looks nice, but I have nuts holes here and there. I'm going to fill them with epoxy. After mixing it well, I fill each hole and nuts on both sides. I just need to wait for the epoxy to cure. When it is, I can sand this. Now I can use this round over a bit to profile the top. In fact, I only use the top part of the bit. Here's the final result. It's exactly what I was aiming for. It's now time for the final sending. This will be screwed just here. But to screw it in place, I need some holes in the top frame. I begin by one hole on each side in the center but all the others will be elongated holes. I make them by drilling three holes and with a rasp remove the wood between them. In all, I drill six elongated holes. And now it's time to finish this. The first thing to do is to vacuum most of the dust away. Then clean it everywhere with wood alcohol and an old sock. Then I'm ready to apply the first coat of varnish. I begin with the top. Next, all the drawers. When it's done, I can spray the top and bottom of the case. Then I put it straight. It will be much easier to spray the rest of the case like this. Now I need to wait for the varnish to dry. Five hours later, I start to sand all the little bumps on the varnish. When they're all gone, I spray the second and last coat. The next day, I'm ready to install the casters. But the holes are way too big. I need to drill smaller holes. When all the holes are drilled, I screw the casters to the bottom of the case.
Now that it's done, I remove the case from the workbench so I can lay the top on it and lay the case on top. After making sure the case is perfectly centered on the top, I screw it in place. Finally, it's time to screw the pulls in place. Eventually, I have all the pulls in place and it's all finished. I just need to push it where it belongs, just beside the CNC. And finally, I have a safe place for my laptop, with chance I won't find it lying on the concrete floor anymore. The best part of this is that I can fill all those drawers now. Okay, most of them are empty for now, but I'm sure I'll be creative enough to fill them with crap. I really love the look of my new cart, but the best part is that it all comes from this pile of wood that was lying around just waiting to rot. It's pretty impressive. Everything was made with this wood, even the drawers. I must admit, I love my drawers. The only thing that doesn't come from this rotting pile is the pulls. And if you want to see how I made them, you'll have to come back to the woodpecker.